Life and death and love and birth and Stop singing! Stop singing! This doesn't look very sturdy at all. The rocks are so cracked that they could probably give way any minute and this thing would be free. We should go back to the temple and grab reinforcements. That's a good idea. Amethyst? Honestly, what did you think was gonna happen? Stay out of this! You know, if Amethyst is adamant on fighting Jasper one-on-one, -on -one, what exactly is stopping either of these two from going to get help like Peridot suggested? I'd get Steven not doing it because he could potentially help shield Amethyst from stuff, but Peridot was the one that suggested the idea in the first place, and I'd hope she would realize that her trying to fight wouldn't really help things. Again, this could have led to something relatively interesting, like the Crystal Gems seeing Smoky Quartz and seeing their reactions, for example. But instead, Peridot just sees it fit to stand around doing absolutely nothing useful. So, a couple critiques on Jasper's fighting here. Firstly, she sees a whip coming at her and her first instinct is to grab the air below the whip for some reason. What was the idea there? Clearly she could see where the whip was aimed, right? Secondly, when Amethyst pulls out a second whip and clearly telegraphs what she's going to do, Jasper just stands there and does absolutely nothing. Why? There's trying to plant false hope in your opponent and play some kind of weird mind games with them, and then there's making yourself look fucking stupid. One of Homeworld's best fighters, ladies and gentlemen. Is it sinking in yet? Are you serious? <laughs> If a small little shield was all it took to knock that thing down, it should have fallen a long time ago. And yes, that shield is probably very strong considering it's technically a diamond shield, but then why didn't it break the glass when it struck that injector? It just doesn't make sense. No matter what I do, no matter how hard I work, she came out right and I came out wrong. She's the only one who thinks you should be like her. Stop trying to be like Jasper. You're nothing like Jasper. You're like me because we're both not like anybody. And yeah, it sucks. But at least I've got you and you've got me. So stop leaving me out of this. As worst gems stick together, right? That's why we're the best. This moment right here is what got me to start really liking Amethyst. I'm gonna come off very biased when I put it like this, but I can really relate to her moments of not feeling like she's good enough sometimes when the going starts to get tough. So when this episode first came out, I really resonated with this whole arc. It's incredible just how much Amethyst as a character was changed for the better. It's honestly pretty commendable. However, I think this scene does suffer from some pretty weird pacing. The way this speech is written really feels like there should have been more to it. Like Amethyst should have pushed back a little more rather than just being like, oh, okay, after Steven pleads with her. It makes this come off a little rushed, which I can understand, but it still feels strange. I don't think there's ever been an explosion when two people have fused together. What the fuck was that about? What a beautiful... Smoky Quartz is such a fantastic character, and her theme is incredible. I wish I could play more of it. Forget your name! You gotta fight to win! Is it just me, or does something seem weird about Peridot's voice in this episode? I can't quite put my finger on it, but it sounds like she has a scratchy throat or something, along with her mic quality not being as good for some reason. In this shot, Smokey's yo-yo is studded with other Smoky Quartzes, but in the next shot, they're back to being Amethysts. One of the gems that falls down from this cliff looks like this, but in the next shot, the yellow section of their head completely vanishes. <laughs> how in the hell did this happen? This goes against most of what we know about how fusion works. I doubt Jasper grabbing this fusion's head counts as any kind of dance. I don't buy that Jasper and the equivalent of a wild animal would be anywhere near the same mental wavelength to be able to just fuse on the spot. And arguing the corrupted gems don't have to consent to fusion not only feels like a cop-out, but it's also disproven immediately by the fact that the corrupted gem is able to unfuse with Jasper by not consenting enough anyway. So this even working in the first place is shaky at best. Also, Jasper is seemingly able to control this fusion pretty well considering that half of it is a rampaging wild animal. You'd think that the fusion would be highly unstable and that Jasper would barely have any control, but nope. Logic is defeated once again by monster look cool and create big drama, so Smokey fight monster. If we go frame by frame in this shot, Jasper's right arm switches colors halfway through. Great job, Smokey. Oh, thank you, thank you, Smokey.
Nobody I fuse with ever wants to stay. That's a weird line. Jasper has only tried to fuse with two people, and one of those was a wild animal. Trying to paint her as even remotely sympathetic now is baffling, to say the least. I may be wrong about this, but me and my co-writer's interpretation on corruption was that corrupted gems lose their sense of selves and essentially turn to their primal instincts. With that in mind, how does Jasper keep her memories and sense of self for so long when she starts to get corrupted? Seriously, she has enough time to scream a whole monologue at Steven. You'd think that if corruption targets the mind so much, that would be the first to go rather than her physical form. After Steven's sandals fly off here, they disappear for not only the rest of the episode, but for the rest of the season. This isn't just Shadow Realm, this is advanced Shadow Realm. I see how you do it now, Rose. You want gems after they're worthless. You wait until after they've lost. Because when you're at the bottom, you'll follow anyone that makes you feel like less of a failure. It's genuinely really interested to hear Jasper's viewpoint on how Rose operated. And hearing Peridot kind of debate Jasper on this with her unique perspective on how Earth helped her is just the cherry on top. This scene is written really well. I got out because I'm better than this place. It's getting worse. I only came back to finish you off. Try not to move! Wow, Steven looks so concerned with how much he's shaking anxiously. But seriously, this looks weird. I see the animation budget ran out. Jasper's lips disappear a couple times as she's talking in this scene. Look, I know the animation budget could probably only afford the crooniverse a meal at McDonald's, but couldn't they have at least given them different facial expressions that aren't just mild surprise? I do really like that Peridot is the one to poof Jasper. It's one of those things that you don't expect, but are pleasantly surprised to see happen in my eyes. Nice to see Peridot get a win. I also like this small moment of kinship that Amethyst feels with Jasper here, and also the nod at Steven and Amethyst's familial-like bond. It's a nice way to tie those couple things together. Just look at this one! You've stripped her of everything!